Hi everyone, welcome to my new video in my Mathematics Essentials series. We are still in the revision topics in the trigonometry section of the revision topics. In the last video, I graphed and explained the graph of y equals the cosecant of theta. And in this video, I am going to graph and explain the graph, the graph of y equals the secant. Of theta. Okay, so this is one of our trigonom our reciprocal trigonometric functions. Okay, and remember y equals the secant of theta is just equal to one over the cosine of theta. It's the reciprocal of the cosine of theta. Okay, so y equals the secant of theta is just the reciprocal of the cosine of theta. It's one over the cosine of theta. Okay, so like I keep saying, you can just Google search the graph to see an image of it or open a mathematics textbook and perhaps find an, Im <clears throat> an image of it in a textbook. Okay, it's not enough to just know what the graph looks like from memory and be able to graph it from memory. Okay, you should understand why the graph looks the way it does. Okay, being able to do something and understanding what you are doing are different things. Okay, so let's put down an axis. Okay, it's going to be a theta y axis. So here's the theta axis, that's our input variable and our output variable, which is the function, what the function is equal to. That will be our y axis. Okay, let's put down some increments for theta. So we'll have all the usual suspects. Okay, increments that involve pi. So we'll have negative two pi, negative pi, negative three pi on two, negative pi on two. This will be 2 pi. This will be pi, negative 3 pi on 2, and negative pi on 2. Oh, sorry. <laughs> These ones will be positive, and uh, pi on 2. Okay. Well, let's consider intercepts. Theta intercepts, if there are any. Okay. I watched the last video again. I realized I. I did use a ruler and that's why it was straight. It wasn't because I was angry with the y variable, although I was angry with the y variable. Okay, so for there to be theta intercepts, that would correspond to y equaling zero, okay, because y equals zero just is the theta axis, okay, but y is just, in this case, the secant of theta. So this corresponds to setting secant of theta equal to zero, but secant of theta is just the reciprocal function for cosine of theta, so it's just 1 over cosine of theta, which we are setting equal to 0. And now we see that we have a quotient equal to 0. The only way to have a quotient equal to 0 is if the value in the numerator is equal to 0, and in our case it isn't, it's 1. 1 is not 0. So there's no way for this to equal 0, and to see this we could just multiply both sides by the cosine of theta, okay? And we would have to do that on the right-hand side to keep the equation balanced, even though in this case it won't make a difference because the right-hand side will still be zero. We'll see that this factor of theta will uh, cancel with, uh, sorry, this factor of cosine of theta will cancel with the cosine of theta in the denominator. So we will just have one on the left-hand side of this equation, and we will have zero on the right-hand side of this equation. And we know that this isn't true. This implies a contradiction because one is not equal to zero. Whenever you get a contradiction in mathematics or formal logic or philosophy or just everyday reasoning, something is to blame, okay? And it can't go unpunished. No compassion here. We must punish the culprit. Something generated this heresy. And in this case, it is y being equal to zero, okay? So when y was a kid, its parents may have told it that it could grow up to be anything it wanted. But when it decided that it was going to be the output variable of the secant of theta function, okay, it gave up its right to be zero. Its parents were lying, okay? It couldn't grow up to be whatever it wanted because it can't be zero, okay? So, once again, we have to deal without y-intercepts, or theta-intercepts, I should say, because if y, whoops, if y cannot be zero, if that's not possible, and y being equal to zero corresponds to theta-intercepts, well, then there can't be any theta intercepts. So this implies that there are no theta intercepts. Okay, there aren't any theta intercepts. We'll have to make do without them. 
maybe we can find some y-intercepts. So let's consider y-intercepts, y-intercepts, okay. All right, well, are there, oh, what's the point of the ruler then? Okay, are there any y-intercepts? Well, if there are any, that corresponds to theta being equal to zero. But y is equal to the secant of theta. So this would mean that y is equal to the secant of zero. Okay, but secant is just one over the cosine. So this corresponds to one over the cosine of zero. Again, from a unit circle, perhaps I'll put one down. Okay, I'll open up my book of witchcraft and wizardry, cast some spells, and summon a unit circle. I summon thee. Okay, so here's our unit circle. And it tells us that the cosine of zero, okay, so if I draw a line from the origin to this point on the unit circle, okay, the angle between that line and the x-axis is zero. So theta equals zero there because that line is just on the x-axis, okay? And when theta equals zero in a unit circle, the value of the cosine of theta is one. So cosine of zero equals one. So we just have one over one, which equals one, okay? So at the coordinate, point theta equals zero and y equals one, we have a y-intercept. We don't have a y-intercept with the graph of cosecant of theta. So let's put in y equals positive one. Okay, you might as well put in y equals negative one because something about symmetry makes me think that we will have some use for uh, putting in that increment. Okay, and Let's put a uh, green dot here. I'll graph the function green. I'm going to put a green dot here to know that whatever the function does, it has to intercept that point. Okay? It has to intercept the y-axis at y equals 1 and theta equals 0, which is just what the y-axis is, theta equals 0. Okay. Um, what else can we uncover about this function? Well, because it's a reciprocal function, it's a quotient, that means we can't have values of 0 in the denominator because the division by 0 is undefined. So we should determine what uh, what values of theta make cosine of theta equal to zero? Okay, if cosine of theta equals to zero, this function y equals to the secant of theta will be undefined. So what values of theta make cosine of theta equal to zero? Okay, our unit circle tells us that here and here, okay, so any angle of theta that would put us at those points on the unit circle would make cosine of theta equal to zero. And it turns out that they are the odd integer multiples of pi on two. So for instance, one times pi on two, okay, then we get to pi, all right, then three times pi on two, four times pi on two, which is just two pi, five times pi on two, six times pi on two, which is just three pi, okay, seven times pi on two. So whenever we have an odd integer multiple of pi on two, Okay, we are going to get these values for cosine of theta on the unit circle uh, that make cosine of theta equal to zero. And the same thing would happen if we were to head in the opposite direction. Negative pi on two, cosine of theta equals zero. Okay, negative pi equals negative one. Okay, at negative three pi on two, cosine of three pi on two would equal zero. Okay, and you know, so on. We could just keep heading around. You get the idea. So that means we're going to have asymptotes. We're going to have asymptotes at these odd integer multiples of pi on two. So let's put them in. Okay. We'll stick to the pattern of previous videos where I do my asymptotes in white. Okay. Three is an odd integer. So three pi on two is an odd integer multiple of three of pi on two. So I'll put in an asymptote there. And let's not neglect the negative angles. Okay, these are just the ones which are measured clockwise from the positive x-axis on a unit circle. We're going to have some asymptotes. Okay, and these asymptotes are going to help us graph the function. Okay, because whenever we have asymptotes, we know that our function is going to have to display some asymptotic behavior. Okay, but notice that there was a value for theta which made cosine of theta equal 1. All right, but we also saw in the unit circle that there's a value for theta, which makes cosine of theta equal negative one. Okay, that means that we can plot 
those values for theta, which make cosine of theta equal 1 and negative 1. Okay, and since secant of theta is just 1 over cosine of theta, that's going to make secant of theta equal 1 and negative 1. Okay, so we can see that when we are at... Come on, surface pen. Oh, I'm, I'm writing in white on the unit circle, which is white. So whenever we are, are at uh, pi, we're going to be negative 1. Whenever we're at 0, we're going to... Cosine of theta is going to be 1, okay? Whenever we get to uh, 3 pi and 2, cosine of theta is going to be equal to 0. Whenever we get to 2 pi, cosine of theta is going to be 1. So basically, at these integer multiples of um, of pi, cosine of theta is going to be either 1 or negative 1. And similarly, if we were to measure our angles in the other direction. So what we can say, or what we can do, is at these integer multiples of pi, we can put down coordinate points where we know the graph must occupy. We know that these points will be on the graph. Okay, so whenever, all right, remember secant of theta is equal to 1 over the cosine of theta. Whenever the cosine of theta equals 1, you're going to have 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. Whenever the cosine of theta equals negative 1, you can have 1 over negative 1, which is going to equal negative 1. Okay, so cosine of pi is going to be is going I'm just looking for my color green there we go is going to be negative 1 which is going to make the secant of theta just 1 over negative 1 and consequently just 1 so we can put in a point there okay and then at 2 pi cosine of 2 pi is positive 1 so secant of 2 pi will just be 1 over 1 1 divided by 1 which will just be 1 so we can put in a point here at theta equals 2 pi and y equals 1. Now, if we were to head in this direction, okay, that would be negative pi, and the cosine of negative pi is negative 1, okay? So at theta equals negative pi, we know that y will equal negative 1, and if we were to keep going in the unit circle, around the unit circle clockwise from the positive x-axis to reach 2 pi, Okay, that's the same, at, or negative 2 pi, I should say. That's the same as theta equals 0, as far as cosine of theta is concerned. So we would have a point on the graph at theta equals negative 2 pi and y equals 1. Okay, and since we know there are asymptotes, we know that the graph would have to stay. Either, you know, for any point on the graph that's below the theta axis, we know that the graph in that region stays between the asymptotes, okay? Um, and we also know that there aren't theta axis. So for instance, we know that from this point here, we would have to approach the asymptotes either side of it, this one at three, negative three pi on two and this one at negative pi on two, okay? If we were to approach trending upwards, for instance, towards the asymptote at negative pi on two, okay, to keep it getting closer to this asymptote, which is what asymptotic behavior comes down to, Okay, which we know we must that the graph must display. We would have to cross the theta axis. Okay, and we know that there aren't any theta intercepts. Remember, we worked that out. There are no theta intercepts. So that means that in order to approach the asymptote at negative pi on two, this graph would have to trend downwards like that. And in order to approach the asymptote at negative three pi on two, this graph would have to trend downwards as well. Okay, another way to see this is to consider a cast diagram. So let's make this unit circle earn its money by taking on extra responsibilities, such as the responsibilities of the cost diagram, which tells where our basic trigonometric functions are positive and consequently negative. We can make a special one for the secant of theta because, you see, wherever cosine of theta is negative, secant of theta is going to be negative 2. Whenever cosine of theta is positive, secant of theta is going to be positive as well. So that means that the secant of theta will be positive in these two quadrants, wherever cosine of theta is positive, and it will be negative in these two quadrants, wherever the cosine of theta is negative. So we could just do this. We could say that secant of theta is positive here and here, and we could say that it is negative here and here. Okay, so that would get us the same information as what I just explained about these uh, green coordinate points that are on the, that must be on the graph of the secant of theta, and the fact that they can't cross the theta axis, okay? So now we are ready to graph the function. And it's going to look like this. We know, let's start at this one here. 
We know that we have a y-intercept at theta equals zero and y equals one. We put that point down. And now we know that we must display asymptotic behavior. So we must approach the asymptote. You have to trend upwards because to trend, whoops, wrong color, because to trend downwards would force us to cross the theta axis. That's naughty. All right, so we're gonna trend upwards and similarly from here, okay? All right, and the same kind of thing would occur here. All right, and then we would trend upwards. My graph doesn't really extend any further than two pi, but that's okay. You know that there would be an asymptote somewhere around here that we'd be approaching, okay? Now, for this point here at theta equals pi and y equals negative one, we know that we have to display asymptotic behavior. So we would have to trend downwards because the trend upwards would force us to cross the theta axis, which we can't. And to approach the asymptote at 3.2, we must trend downwards, okay? Now, for the same reasons, from the point at theta equals negative pi and y equals negative one, you're going to see this kind of behavior, asymptotic behavior either side of that point trending downwards because trending upwards would cross, force us to cross the theta axis and up here we would have to trend upwards because we can't trend downwards okay and even though my theta axis doesn't extend very far beyond negative pi on two you know that there'd be an asymptote somewhere around here okay that that part of the graph is approaching so that's pretty much everything that's the graph of y equals the secant of theta which is one of our tri reciprocal trigonometric functions uh the only one left now to show is the graph of y equals the cotan gent of theta. This is something that I didn't show you with the graph of y equals the cosecant of theta, but I will show you this with y equals the secant of theta. I didn't want to pack too much information into the last video, okay? But I'm going to graph y equals the cosine of theta, okay? I'm going to graph that in, uh, let's say, red, okay? Well, I'll graph x equals the cosecant of theta, but I'll graph it on the same axes, okay? Um, well, it doesn't matter. You can think of it as y equals the cosecant, uh, y equals the cosine of theta. But if I graphed it, it would look like this. Okay, so I'll put in some points actually. Actually, the points are already there. The only other points to put in are at multiples of pi on 2, odd multiples of pi on 2. So there'd be a point here, there'd be a point here, uh, there'd be a point here and there'd be a point here. Okay, look what's gonna happen. And it might be interesting for you to think about why this happens. Okay. Hmm, interesting. Why might that be? Food for thought. Anyways, I'll get rid of that because the video wasn't about the graph of the cosine of theta. There's a previous video on that. But anyways, that's what the graph looks like for y equals the secant of theta. I'll label it. This is, well, I labeled it up here. All good. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to give it a like. Uh, feel free to share it with some friends. Uh, if you'd like a notification, when I upload a new one, subscribe to my channel. And if anything was confusing, or if you're just curious about something, uh, feel free to post a question in the comments. Until the next video, bye for now.